Welcome to the Two Pages Project, part of the Coil Entertainment Network. I'm Rob Steele. If you'd like to become a published author with us, stay tuned after the show for a vast majority of the details. But first, let's get to this week's story, where we have a romantic interlude about the values of marriage and why you shouldn't take each other for granted. You have to listen to The Dream by John King. She was beautiful, standing there in silk while a gentle breeze waved at me in the soft folds of enticement that encircled her. I think I bought her that dress, but I can't be sure. I stared at her, objectifying away everything else about her, my eyes tempting me with uncontrolled desire. Did she notice me? She stood there continuing to talk to who knows who. I think her mom. They talked about her taking the car somewhere. She was leaving. We were standing in two separate worlds, to be sure, she and I. And, to be sure, that was nothing new. I saw her that evening, maybe for the first time, staring at her through the mists of my negligence. I had lost sight of her over the years, but now, here she stood, the indescribable image of the woman I fell in love with back when we found each other on a college campus. A friend assured me no one falls in love. Love is a growth thing. All I know is that I never saw her this way before. I don't think. But as I said, this was nothing unusual. My story was not hers. My life was full of professional dreams and career challenges. Hers was diapers, baby bottles, and all things maternal. But now and then our paths crossed as if the fates sought to reintroduce us to each other. Was this one of those times? She busied herself with the mundane. Her world was a silent world of a thousand thoughtful acts gone unnoticed. She busied herself in the shadows away from the peering eyes and minds of a culture in search of an identity, of neighborly neighbors whom she would never meet. Nothing in her personality shouted, look at me. Nothing about her gave one sense that she was anyone important. But in this moment, with the breezes awakening my senses to her beauty, she was important to me. Her life was far simpler than mine, but I think this is a mistake because a woman's complexity, a wife's love, a mother's devotion cannot be measured. Perhaps this is why I couldn't see what I was looking at. Perhaps this is how she disappeared in plain sight. Perhaps this is why men need to objectify a single aspect of a woman's person. He simplifies his gaze. He focuses somewhere in her world where he can begin to imagine he knows what he sees, as untrue as that may be. He has no education and no educator to explain what he cannot analyze, but only admire. Whether it is her mind or her body, he can only stare with eyes glazed over in a passionate wonderment of how fortunate he is to be near her. Beyond this, all else is philosophical chatter, bloviating, nothing said, because it isn't the mind of a man that is awakened, but his heart. I have spent my life counseling others about the importance of love, about the dangers of affairs, about the snare of casual relationships, an oxymoron to be sure. I cautioned a thousand couples about letting their hurts fester in the silence of an estranged romance. But I heard not a word I said. I forgot that I needed her. Yet, here she was, unknowingly drawing me into her sphere. What do they say? Under her spell? And I wanted to be there. Where does my story go from here? She is leaving, and I cannot get her attention. 
Yet I remember a night long ago, when romance was young and innocent and naive, that I was all night with a friend at his work bellowing at my despair, my feeling neglected, until the morning fog arrived, so symbolic of the moment, calling me home. When I arrived home, I found her asleep. I had, at the time, little doubt she was dreaming of other things and disinterested in where I was or why. But years later in conversation, I learned she knew she was no more asleep than I. I recalled this now because she was leaving, and she seemed not to care that I was trying to wave her off this excursion. For reasons I will never know, she couldn't pause long enough to give explanation. But she did smile at me, at least that, effortlessly in my direction. And then, with an absent-minded change of thought, turned away again while my feeling of wanting to hold her, caused by that look, set fire to my soul flashing within me, like fire to a straw, consuming all interest in everything else. The fire of love stops at nothing. It sweeps everything before it, King Solomon cautions. I watched her walk to the car. I watched her leave. They say that loneliness cannot kill, but this is humbug. By definition, self-deceiving. For we baby thoughts and cuddle feelings that should be challenged. I found myself growing content while thinking, she will miss me when I leave her. I must learn to live without her? Must I subliminate my longing into other interests? Must I let an old girlfriend and a fond memory of past acquaintance monopolize my thoughts? Am I jealous of her car? How sensible sounding irrational ramblings. How logical my request. How reasonable a man's needs. Here is another pause worth pursuing. What about, well, me? If there is a God, why did he make me this way? Why have hormones and circumstances colluded to bring me this pain? Why must I miss her so? Especially since I know she will return soon. She has left countless times before and returned. This is nothing new. Ah, but it is. For once, I noticed her. An entire section of this story is missing. What about her feelings? I, I forgot to ask. And if I'm being honest, it seemed inappropriate of me to guess at them. As I have been all these years of silent reflection and self-pity, focusing on all things me... But something different must be happening here since I am beginning to recognize things about myself that I would never have admitted back then. Those regrettable, hurtful reactions in my life that haunt my thoughts, scolding me about parts of a past that need to remain. Just that. Past. I am beginning to think that there are things about her I had never imagined. Treasures locked away in a relationship never seriously sought out. And the fact that I am still very much alive to her beauty tells me there is also still hope. There is still time to get acquainted with someone I have wanted to get acquainted with since the beginning of time. I have daughters, but she is my little girl, my true princess who was once that little girl in every real sense, growing up in her world that was often cruel and unforgiving. She was that teenager that needed to be loved. Then, I showed up. And what difference, dare I ask, did I make? But all this is too serious now, too, too analytical, too much pining. Where there is love, there is always a future. My thoughts now are on all the tomorrows ahead, all the opportunities before us to make good the wedding promises, the oath of fidelity every couple repeats without thought or conviction. But I know I said it. I watched her car turn the corner out of sight. 
I watched her mom make her exit back indoors, probably to continue cooking something for later, I surmise. I watched until it was just me alone with my thoughts. I was alone with the breeze that brushed against my cheek to remind me that this moment really happened. I had no place to go and no one else I wanted to see. I was momentarily lost among the trees, whispering the hopeful refrain, She will be back. I lost myself in that vision that night, when I seemed to see her for the first time, although we'd been married for decades. That night, when all else was out of focus, emotionally fogged over by the blinding glow of an angelic form. Maybe for the first time, <laughs> I haven't been keeping score, she seemed to glow while my memories raced to keep up. Image after image in recollection of all the many times she was always there in my life. Always around, always busy, always behind the scene making sure the lights that shine on center stage caught my image in their glare. How important all these years were to each other, and the arguments, the moments away, the times I flew solo, lied to me. I awoke. It was all a dream, but not one I wanted to ever forget. I began to realize that I had just played out in timeless recollection the story of my adulthood, all in a REM sleep moment. Nothing is as real as reliving in night visions unresolved feelings or discovering in dreams those lost memories denied in the daylight. I lay there, feeling the ache of her absence. It was around three in the morning. She lay silently, sleeping beside me, unaware of where I had just been. I rolled over in her direction and, draping my arm gently across her motionless form, fell peacefully back to sleep. If you'd like to have your story on the show, which is the reason we're here, just send it to us. Check out the website, twopagesproject.com, for the rules, and we'll take your short story and publish it first as an ebook on the website, then turn it into an audiobook on the podcast. And when we've got enough stories, we'll turn it all into an actual book that you can buy at a store. If you'd like to submit a story, email it to contact at twopagesproject.com. We'll be open to any type of story you want to send us, not just romance, but mystery, sci-fi, fantasy, historical fiction, western, whatever you feel like writing, as long as it's fiction. Just submit your story for the audiobook treatment and publishing on our website, and don't forget to use that new email address, contact at twopagesproject.com. While we're at it, don't forget to pass the show around because it's free and it's fun. We'd like to thank iTunes, the Google Play Store, VillageConnectionRadio.com, and the Happy Hour Network for passing the show along. But also, don't forget to follow all the Coil Entertainment Network shows on Pinterest and YouTube, and check out the Coil Entertainment Network store, where we've got t-shirts and hats that all go to support the network, so please check that out. And, if you're interested in being part of the audiobook process, be it as a voice in the story, or if you have background music that would work, that's great too. Use that same email address, contact at twopagesproject.com. So until next week, be safe and keep writing. <laughs>